It's a pleasure to speak with you today. My name is Stephen Leggett and I'm the middle child of Jean Leggett and Fanny Sterling Ross. I'm honored to have a small part in this presentation today as we remember the beginning of a struggle that continues to this day. Back in the late 1950s and early 60s, my parents brought three boys into the world. John, Stephen, and Mark Leggett all had prominent biblical names by design. Reflecting the new assignments of a new pastor, all three boys were born in various cities. John was born in Patterson, New Jersey in 1959. I was born in San Antonio in 61. And Mark was born in Dilly, Texas in 1962. As a child, my brothers and I had front row seats to a movement that we understood very clearly. A gifted thespian with a flair for the dramatic, Dad never hid his sexuality from us once he accepted that path. At times, this was embarrassing to me but Dad was such a loving and caring father that it's only in hindsight that I see that my childhood was in any way unusual. Like most all of us when we look at our parents through child eyes, our parents are larger than life figures. Dad had such a grand combination of magnetism and stage presence that it didn't matter what he was doing, he was hard to miss and hard not to like. My brothers and I were all proud to watch him perform both on the stage and in the theater of life. My mom remarried to a wonderful man in 1971, so my brothers and I relocated to South Texas. Dad would come down from Dallas and we would visit Grandma and spend time bowling and roller skating in Dad's hometown of Edinburgh, Texas. Never one to shy away from controversy, Dad had a t-shirt with block letters across the front that boldly had the word faggot printed across the chest. Yes, he wore it while roller skating, forever the activist, even in a small border town over 40 years ago. I remember my brothers and I asking him if he had to wear that shirt in public, and he just smiled. He just wasn't the guy who was ever going to be silenced. The Methodist Church learned this lesson eventually. The toughest part of being Gene Leggett's son had nothing to do with his parenting style or activism. It was explaining to childhood peers that Dad was gay. The negative stigma was overpowering at times, especially when my own sexuality was developing along with school friends. I remember in sixth grade walking to school with a few of my best friends when the topic of homosexuality came up. It's the first time I can recall when I didn't know what to say or how to handle the harsh response my peers had toward the topic. One friend said he'd rather be dead than have a gay father. I didn't share that my father was gay that day. Of course, it wasn't a topic that came up often among kids on the border. Fortunately, anyone who ever met Dad was quickly won over to the man as a man. I don't recall ever being teased even one time for having a gay parent. Dad's likable magnetism was a trait that made him successful with art benefactors of Dallas to the prima ballerinas from Russia. When the female models in my mom's fashion magazine started to appeal to me, I remember a huge sense of relief because I knew the world would never discriminate against me for the sexual preference that was beyond my control. I've held on to that memory as it continues to be a sad and sobering thought. It does not have to be this way, and it shouldn't be this way. When I got to be of college age, I was fortunate that my second dad sent me to Southwestern University in Georgetown. Many will recognize that like SMU in Dallas, Southwestern is also affi affiliated with the Methodist Church. A lot of Methodist minister families send their kids to Southwestern, and naturally I was drawn to these kids with a similar Methodist foundation. It was here in college that I learned about Dad's protests at annual conference from peers whose Methodist minister parents shared the stories, often critically. I confirmed the stories with Dad, and like usual, he shared the events of gagged protest effortlessly, without shame. As fate would have it, my college roommate was the son of the chairman of the board of ministry that responded with a denial letter to Dad's request for restoration of his ministerial credentials. Bishop Dan Solomon is retired now, and his son remains one of my very best friends from my college days. Stepping back from the larger view of things, it's odd how very small the world is and how a global movement can be reduced to roommates and best friends at a private Methodist, Methodist university in Texas. And while it can be reduced, it can also be expanded. In regard to the Methodist Church, my question has always been, why has simple acceptance taken so long? Outside of losing Dad way too early in life, I would not change a thing about my family or my childhood years. 
However, I would change a lot about the timeline to get to where we are today. Of course, there's much work yet to be done. Thank you for remembering my dad, Gene Leggett. It means so much to our family. The importance of this day and dad's impact is a source of great family pride. Nice.